Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 30th, 2023. Well, let's see. Yesterday, we had quite the moves in the market with a big pop in the pre-market, and then we just struggled to hold it all day long as we continue to get data from the Fed members suggesting that well, they may not be done raising rates. Well, let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, um, Asian markets did a pretty good job overnight. Um, up across the board, kind of modest gains, uh, except the Nikkei, Nikkei was up um, a half, uh, half a point um, overall. But um, we learned last night that the manufacturing sector in China had declined for another um, for another month. So a little bit of worry there. Um, China's doing some more quantitative easing, trying to resolve some of these problems. This is the third or fourth round of some attempt to get things moving over there, but they're still struggling. We've got European markets up across the board this morning. Um, no particular reason that that is happening other than um, it's the end of the month and everyone wants uh, to make uh, new highs um, on the end of the month and finish the month strong. Uh, so that's what we've got going on there. And U.S. markets, even though we struggled to hold positive all day long yesterday, overnight we're going to gap this thing up again and we're going to try and take out the highs in some of the indexes this morning. If we take a look at oil, oil started down after Chinese data yesterday, but has reversed into the green, pushing up this morning. Um, one of the reasons that's likely the case is we're going to have that OPEC meeting today and maybe a possible decision as to production cuts. And if you looked at our um, situation um, in the petroleum status yesterday, you noticed that a remarkable build in supplies, which means consumer demand is falling sharply and um, a production cut um, probably isn't going to hurt us all that much other than raising um, gas prices again. Let's take um, a look at our index charts here and see if we can gain a little bit of information on how we might want to approach the market today on this Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Let's try to shake off um, our bias of what we want the market to do, and let's take a look at the indexes and see whether or not um, we can um, gain some information about how we might want to approach the market today. First off, let's take a look here at the diamonds. As you can see, we stretched up there and we tested that resistance level that I put in the chart yesterday. We got up there and we tagged that um, yearly high here in the diamonds and, and then pulled all the way back. But, well, they're not happy with that in the overnight um, institutions continuing to pound money into corporate buybacks to keep this market running to the upside. Even though volume has been incredibly light here and we're continuing to see market breadth be very weak, we're still pounding to the upside here. And um, I suggested yesterday that into the end of the month uh, to keep pushing up in that likelihood that we're going to make a new uh, yearly high here on the diamonds now. And I think they're going to do that here in the pre-market. Now the question will be, will they be able to follow through with that? Um, or will it be another pop and drop on the day? If we um, do assume that those bulls are going to keep going, we're going to have to stretch over here to uh, 2021 and early 2022 to find that next resistance level in the market. And I'm gonna place it right up about there. If those bulls can continue to find that inspiration here, well, let's look for that 
push up here to maybe test that resistance level to see whether or not we can break on through. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration um, in the market today, maybe a push back down. Notice we've got a little tiny bit of price support in here. We might catch it somewhere in the top side of that, the bottom side of that, if the bears get going. One thing you do have to say, and it's just, uh, I mean, there's no question about it whatsoever. Bulls remain in control, uh, despite the fact that volume is weakening pretty substantially. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY, also pop and drop yesterday, trying to get things going, trying to break out, just couldn't get her going uh, enough yesterday. We did end up, you know, this line that I put in here, uh, we did end up running right into this uh, trend line, the underneath side of that trend line. We tagged it almost perfectly and then reversed here on the day, pushing back down kind of dark cloud cover here in the uh, SPY. But if those bulls can continue to find that inspiration, let's look for that opportunity that we might push back up in here, retest this level of resistance in the chart. If we were to break out of that, then we may be starting to think about moving over here and seeing whether or not we can test some of these resistance levels up above in 2021 in 2020, early 2022. So watch that close. Now, if if those bears were to find inspiration today, um, look for that opportunity that we could push back down and maybe test this level of price support. If that fails, then we're likely coming a bit lower into that price section. And here you'll notice that that kind of connects up with that little high right there in the chart. So keep a close eye on that. QQQ. Strongest of the indexes continues to be the strongest of the indexes, but we also ended up with a big old pop and drop up here, leaving behind a dark cloud cover. We're still in this consolidation range here in the chart. We did run up there, try to tag that resistance here in the chart that I'd marked yesterday. If we can continue on higher from that today, I'm going to put a level right through there. That would be the next level up if the bulls can find that inspiration well first off let's test this area see if we can break through if we can break through here then maybe up into this next level of the chart however if the bears find inspiration today we've got a little bit of a pullback to test this support here in the chart but if that were to fail then we would have that situation where we could really pull back uh, fairly substantially here in the QQQ, find a little bit of support right in there. And then just realizing we've got a big gap underneath there. We've left some huge back gaps behind in this market. And we should expect at some point in time, some of those will be filled and um, some bigger levels of price support tested. But for now, bulls are in control, holding into that support level of the chart. If we take a look at our IWM, oh, IWM, it finally made a move yesterday and it popped out of that resistance and now we end up, we've got double wicks up here. We've tested this resistance a couple of times, backing away from it, dropping back down below this level of price support. We're trying to pump the market up again this morning in the pre-market. So if the bulls can uh, find that inspiration, look for them to push on through that level up here, trying to gain or, or break on through the 200 day moving average up above here, and then see if we can retest this level up here. Um, if, however, those bears were to find inspiration pulling back, I'd look for a little test of this support area in here nothing wrong with this chart if that's the case we're still holding in a trend so it's not that odd to see as a rest in a trend like this out to um, out to the trend and um, if we were to fail through there well maybe a pullback into here we might test this lower level in here and the trend in that chart if the bears were to get going let's take a look at our vix our VIX had a little bit of fear yesterday, popping up here in the in the market. Um, 
spiking up just a little bit on that um, news that the Fed may continue uh, to raise rates. And then um, we pushed all the way back down as if, nope, 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 don't care, don't care, don't care. What's interesting to see this morning is in the pre-market, we've got a little bit of a push to the upside here in um, the VIX. Um, despite the fact that we've got um, such a bullish move here in the market. But if the bears, uh, or excuse me, if the bulls continue to push, the, our next level is right down here, somewhere around the 11 handle in um, the VIX, if uh, we continue to say that there's nothing here to fear at all. However, if those bulls grab a hold, gain a little bit of strength, uh, grow some teeth maybe, um, we might come up here and test these next levels up here around the 13 and a half uh, handle in the VIX. And if we break through there, then we're up into that 14 handle area of the VIX. Let's take a look at our um, T2122. Remember, T2122, all it is is the four week new high, new low ratio. It doesn't tell us which way we're going to go. It tells us where our pressure points are in the market of being overbought or oversold. And yesterday, um, on that spike back up, we were up in here in T2122. And then, of course, by the end of the day, we kind of pulled, pulled back uh, to close the day right in here. And uh, this morning, we're gapping up again this morning. So my expectations at the open today is we'll probably pop right back up here into the overbought condition of the market. And the question will be, will we be able to hold that? We've been lingering and lingering and lingering as we've been stretching out this bull run into a ridiculous parabolic move. But that doesn't mean it can't continue. If they can find that inspiration today, pushing it on up here into the close of, of the, the month and maybe even the close of the week um, may continue to find bullishness. So watch that carefully up here as we stretch up um, this morning into this overbought condition. If the sellers um, uh, start to gain a little bit of strength, well, let's just keep in mind as we stretch up here, we've opened this huge opening um, for a downside move. And unfortunately it could move pretty sharply to the downside and quickly because a lot of folks would be running um, for the door all at the same time working to protect profits. Let's take a look at our uh, T2108. Our T2108 ended up finishing dead flat yesterday, not really moving, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, as long as those bulls continue to find the energy that they're, well, finding this morning in the pre-market. Um, we're holding above a support level here, holding in there close to 65 handles. And as I've said, somewhere between 65 and 75 handles as we reach that very, very frothy condition in the market and the high probability uh, or the probability of a pullback would grow even more. But for now, um, holding up here in this range, we've got a good support area if the bears get inspired and we pull back. If the bulls get inspired, we'll want to start watching some of these resistance levels up in here if they can push on through to the upside. But one thing is for sure, bulls are still in control and there's no question to that um, at the moment. Uh, T2107, very much the same. Uh, just turned a little bit lower here. Um, I think that's the influence of the Russell actually putting in that kind of a nasty shooting star yesterday pulling back but we're still holding this trend we're still holding above support levels in this chart we clearly are struggling a little bit with resistance right here in the chart right along this area but um with support underneath if the bears get going um, no particular worries excuse me just yet but if we um see the bulls get inspired today, then a push through this area up here is what I'd be expecting. And then we'd start stretching up there toward that 50% of the stocks above the 200 day moving average. Let's take a look at our uh, T2101. Now T2101 is the breadth indicator. And remember, it doesn't, rem it doesn't 
require a direction of the market to show us if breadth, breadth is strengthening or weakening. And what you can see that's been happening this week is our breadth has been weakening pretty substantially here um, as this bull run is kind of getting a little bit long in the tooth. So pulling back here, we did get a little teeny tiny hook in here trying to show that maybe that breath is trying to come up here. And I suspect we'll show this morning in the at least in the early part of the day that that breath will be turning up to the bullish side. But then the question will be, will it hold the rest of the day as we attack those resistance areas of the chart? Remember, we could also have bears. If the bears were to come in and attack in a strong way, and I don't think that's happening today, but if they were to come in and attack in a heavy way, then Brett can rally on the bear side of, of the market as well if uh, the bears show that strength in the market. So just kind of keep that in mind. If we continue to fade today in breadth, uh, by the end of the day, that really wouldn't surprise me all that much. But we'll see how that works out. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And our economic calendar, well, we've got a few things to be thinking about here today. Clearly, um, one of the major things we talked about yesterday is going to be this personal incomes and outlays um, at 8.30 a.m. this morning. So prior to the market open, we're going to have a couple of big numbers here that could move us substantially. Um, first off, remember we've got this OPEC meeting here this morning that we'll want to be paying attention to whether they'll make that decision to cut production. I don't know. I think that there's an awful lot of evidence that that could be the case, but wait and see, and that could have ramifications on energy prices today. Um, you um, got the jobless claims coming in here this morning. Jobless claims were, um, we had a decline in initial claims by 24,000 last time, a major, uh, major decline showing that jobs market is still way too hot for the Fed. We'll see if that starts to change, and I suspect it will here. We're seeing demand decline, so I suspect one day we're going to get some surprise changes here in employment and we're going to start seeing um, uh, more and more folks filing for unemployment but maybe not just yet if we take a look at uh, personal incomes and outlays that's going to be a very very important um, inflation read today watch that one close closely very likely it could move the market either bullishly or bearishly so watch that close we've got william speaking today we've got chicago pmi pending home sales a natural gas report we've got some bond auctions and we've got a fed balance sheet here after the bell nobody's going to care about as we look into friday and prepare for friday just note that we've got bar speaking pmi manufacturing ism manufacturing uh, construction spending Goolsby Powell Powell and Cook speaking tomorrow so we've got um, boy lots of Fed conversation out there continuing to confuse the market and um, make everybody wonder what happens next let's take a peek at our earnings calendar here for today and now earnings calendar um, we do have a little bit of a, a busy day here today with some notables to be paying attention to. I'll run through some of these. Won't be able to cover them all. If you're interested, make sure and click the link just below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog for those Thursday notables. We're going to have stocks like um, ASO reporting today. Um, AMBA will be reporting today. Nice pop there. Nice little pattern in this chart on AMBA. We're going to hear from Big Lots today. A little pop and drop going on there in the pre-market. We've got Dell that will be reporting today. That's been stretching big time to the upside as, as tech is just so hot, hot, hot here in the market. We've got Titan reporting today. That's looking a little bit to the south side this morning. We've got um, TD, uh, Toronto Bank in there reporting. We've got UBS in there reporting. Big shot to the upside on UBS this morning, stretching those banks higher. And we're going to hear from Ulta.
Nice pop this morning on Ulta and ZUMZ. Um, so remember, if you want the full list of notables, click that link below the title of the video. That'll take you back. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. And remember, guys, um, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. You have to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in um, following anybody's trade ideas and blindly trading uh, someone's ideas is not a good idea. Make sure you uh, do your own due diligence. You evaluate, evaluate your trades based on your risk tolerance. But before we do that really quick, I want to remind everyone if this video um, is the first time you've seen it, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click the bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, just leaving those comments, clicking those thumbs up buttons helps a lot. I do try to answer all of those. Thank you so much, everyone who does take the time to do that. I do truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a few look at a few stocks in here that um, are just looking pretty darn good overall um, here in the market. First off, let's take a peek at... Um, uh, the utility sector utilities has been moving up yesterday saw a little bit of selling coming in here on the utility sector and that could continue to rest or pull back a little bit but boy this has been quite a run and you, what i want you to notice is we've broken that downtrend in here so if we can hold up here in this support area and just rest a little while then we may have that opportunity that utilities could stretch on higher we talked about some of those individual utilities yesterday and um, overall just looking pretty darn good let's take a look at TLT you guys know that I've been talking about this for a while that TLT may soon find those buyers and really start pushing up and we've been moving to the upside pretty strongly yesterday I ended up selling some short calls against my TLT position to hedge just with the thought that it's likely to rest consolidate here um, relatively soon we'll see um, I never know if I'm right in fact I sold um, calls well out of the money to protect myself in this position just just a hedge here a little bit on on that but TLT has been looking really really good and um, we're pulling back this morning the reason is we've got the dollar get the dollar pushing up here this morning we finally found a little bit of support dollar trying to strengthen here just a little bit but I want to remind you TLT is not the only place you can um, take a look at um, BND BND is quite the bond fund big old pop and drop going on here in BND this morning this has been running to the upside you could look at um, junk bonds um, there's several bond um, um, ETFs out there that are available. You can see those junk bonds have been spiking to the upside, trying to break through resistance here in the chart. If they break through and hold th any of these areas in here as support, I would be looking for that next opportunity to the upside because if if the market is weakening, we're likely to see bonds get picked up here um, in the market. Take a look at um, SKLZ. SKLZ, pretty nice looking chart. As you can see, been moving up in this nice little upside trend and we're resting and pulling back here just a little bit. Um, uh, as of yesterday, pulling back um, just to see if we can test support in trend. I would watch for that next opportunity. If we do hold in here, watch for that next opportunity for that to extend on through to the upside looking pretty darn good now we've been seeing gold and silver just ripping to the upside here um, with the dollar strengthening today I would watch this carefully I think there's a pretty good chance gold and silver will start to pull back here in the market now that doesn't mean that they're gonna break all the way back down if you look right in here this is a pretty steep trend for gold and silver but what we're also seeing, is, we're, as I mentioned yesterday, is we're seeing defensive sector stocks per perking up and coming up in the market. I think there might be that rotation that institutions are starting to rotate out of some of those high-flying stocks into defensive sector stocks, looking for that opportunity that we need some of that protection going into 2024 and that possible 
um, recession that, uh, well, the la latest survey is over 70% of CEOs believe we're going into recession within the next 12 months. So they're, um, they're looking for that possibility and, and maybe picking up some of those defensive areas of the market. So that doesn't mean gold just collapses or continues to fall. What it may mean is that we come back, we rest, we consolidate a little bit, and then we see if we start moving on higher. I would say the same for silver. I would keep a close eye on that. We tested this big resistance in the chart. Needs a pullback, just too straight up in a move. But that also shows us that little bit of fear that may be coming into the market when we start pounding heavily into um, silver and gold. Be kind of careful. Um, as that progresses. Now, let's take a look at some of those other um, areas of the market that might be really interesting today, and that would be in the energy sector. Take a look at XLE. Now, XLE has broken down. It's clearly in a downtrend, and honestly, this sets up um, really as a possible short in my eyes. But looking at this, if we suddenly get a change in OPEC, we could see uh, some of those energy stocks starting to move back higher. So you might want to look at some of those names um, of stocks that have been pulling back here on these uh, we could really start to support some of these stocks I would look at stocks uh, you know in the refining area I would look for stocks uh, per perhaps in uh, production areas maybe uh, working to come up out of bottoms if OPEC does cut production uh, we're going to need to pick up our own production to keep those oil prices from spiking so watch some of those areas carefully I could see several of those um, stocks um, um, start moving back higher um, in the market on the energy side of things and we do have those up just a bit this morning um, let's take a look at some other areas boy we've had an awful lot of um, growth here really fast in some of the building supplies, um, home building things. There's still a lot of confidence that um, we need to just build, 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 build right now because those prices are high and a lot of folks can't afford to be in them, uh, get into homes. But we might actually start to see a weakening. We're seeing that major weakening happening in China on their real estate front. And I suspect that's going to translate around the world um, here eventually. But watch this carefully. Home Depot has been looking really 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 good popping through resistance pulled back a little bit yesterday if that just rests or consolidates in here there may be some upside opportunity in there and you can look in several of those places in the market um, I gotta spell the ticker right there we go Fastenal. Uh, Fastenal has had this really nice rally to the top side. Um, hit major resistance, likely going to pull back, maybe find some support down in this area. If it can find some support and hold and rest for a little while, then there's no reason to believe that can't move on up because of the way builders are. Take a look at stocks like Masco. Masco's been running to the upside, another building supplier looking very strong here in the chart, trying to break through and pump on through to the upside. So as long as we don't have any major shift in sentiment in the market, I don't see any reason why those can't keep moving on up. So with that, everyone, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day. Be very careful in this market as we spike in the pre-market. Look for that possible pop and drop, pretty substantial whipsaw. Be careful chasing already extended stocks. But I wish you all the very best today. I wish you great success in your trading. I'll see you right back here, bright and early Friday morning. Have an awesome day, everyone.